Hey everyone, I hope all are well. Uh, if you remember, till now we talked about vertebrates or chordate animals. We said that we can divide vertebrates in two ways, like in uh, superclass pieces and superclass tetrapods. If you remember, we divided superclass pieces in three classes like agnata, osteoctites, and chondroctites. Then we say that uh, superclass tetrapods got three four classes like amphibians um frogs and salamanders kind of animals which got uh, two life stages inside water and and uh, on land uh, then we talked about reptilia uh, and the way they are shedding and the way they can live uh, and elves or birds in different kind of it and today we are going to talk about last class of it which is class mammalia so be with me till the end of the lesson for getting information about that interesting class so starting with some characteristics of mammalia first of all we can say that we can classify mammals as their skin that their skin is uh, mostly covered with hair and uh, they, uh, if we see the internal structure of their hair um, follicles we we can see that uh, in their skin is made up of uh, three layers like epidermis, dermis and uh, fat cells. The hair follicle is located in dermis layer as you can see and in epidermis layer we can see the uh, hair structure as well. So their hair is located deeper inside their skin and uh, they got sweet glands and kind of other glands uh, inside their skin structure and also about their heart structure we can see that they got four chambered heart it means their heart got four kind of cavities uh two arteries and two ventricles uh, and they got closed circulatory system so blood is not coming out from their um, heart and blood vessels blood is not running out blood is always circulating inside their blood vessels and heart uh, so they are closed circulatory system owners and they are warm blooded animals so what does it mean it means that their body temperature is constant so uh, they can uh, live in each season in each kind of uh, climate uh, they are adapted to live in each climate so they are warm blooded animals uh, and the other thing which is making the mammal is that they are uh, feeding their youngs with milk. So in female mammals, uh, there are some glands like mammary gland which is responsible for producing milk. And this mammary gland is actually something which is um, making the mammal. It means uh, a very important feature of mammals are that they are able to feed their young with the milk that they are producing. Uh, and their brain is uh, so much developed that they got different functions uh, and uh, their size can be different from 5 centimeters up to 30 meters and the other thing which is important about mammals are that sexes are separated they got male and female and they are doing internal fertilization so the process of fertilization might happen inside the body of female one that sperm and egg has to fuse with each other inside the female body then female can give birth to a new offspring so their uh, giving birth process is also interesting that we are going to talk about it as well so about the other feature of mammals we can say that according to their feeding behavior we can divide them in three parts like some of them might be herbivores or plant eaters some of them might be carnivores or kind of animals uh, who, which are eating other animals and or meat and they can be uh, omnivores or eating both plants and meat according to their movement most of them got four legs by which they are moving on land or they might have uh, flippers by which they can move inside water or they might have wings i mean only one kind of it which is bat got wings and uh, can fly as well so uh, we say that according to uh, the way that they are developing embryos we can divide mammals into three subclasses or into three groups we can say so first of all are mammals which can lay egg that we can call them as monotremata and the second category is pouched mammals or mammals which got a pouched like structure on their abdomen so we can call them, uh, call them as uh, marsupelia 
and at last we have um, placenta mammals or mammals which are uh, produ um, making placenta structure inside their abdomen so let's talk about each of them uh, starting with the first kind of it or egg laying mammals or monotremata these are um, duckbills and ant eaters uh, they are a few living species are remained from that kind of animals uh, and their life cycle is like the adult one is laying egg the egg is grown up growing up to be a young uh, or egg hatches to be uh, hatches to a young platypus or to a young duckbill and young is growing up to be an adult and the cycle is um continuing like this uh, and the interesting thing about this kind of animal is that they got mammary glands they got structures that they can produce uh, milk and they are feeding their young with their own milk uh, second group or second subclass is uh, marsupilia or pouched mammals the main examples of that kind of mammals are like kangaroo sugar glider wombat and uh, opossum that in australia and america we can find that kind of animals um and they got a pouch like structure in on their abdomen uh, so their life cycle is like first of all they are giving birth to a undeveloped embryo an embryo which is so much tiny like a jelly bin that embryo is moving from their vagina to their pouch which is located at their abdomen inside the pouch there is mammary glands which are producing milk so thus undeveloped embryo is start uh, starting to suck the internal um mammary uh, structures that they got or milk producing structures that they got and then they can uh, live at the pouch of their mother and after a time they are growing up they can come out from the pouch but they can return back for sucking the milk which is inside the mother's pouch and again uh, their reproductive cycle is continuing like this and the last group or last subclass is placenta mammals uh, so first of all we can say that some animals are developing their offsprings inside their abdomen it means there is no egg there is no uh, like uh, undeveloped uh, embryos they are uh, developing their babies inside their abdomen completely then they are giving birth to it and that kind of animals for example in human we can see that the uterus structure uh, there is a placenta structure as well or a structure like this the placenta function is to help the the mom and the baby to exchange uh, the nutrients and helping baby to respire it means exchange gases like oxygen and carbon dioxide and help baby to excrete uh, as we know baby is using from the nutrients that the mother of that baby is using so with the help of their placenta structure baby can excrete and respire and mm, nutrient exchange can be happen between embryo and mother so this is the placenta structure which is important and in some mammals they are producing placenta in order to develop their baby inside their abdomen so that was all about mammals i hope you learned thanks for being with me till the end of the lesson